Hey guys, Mojito Beans here. We just finished our high roller leaderboard push. We got number one treasure hunter. We got number one most extracting and number one boss killing solo player. I wanted to redo the cave troll video. We had one forever ago and I kind of had the information you needed, but I keep on getting a lot of the same questions about double attacks and what to do when you get hit with a roar, things like that. Uh, this video should have all the information you need. Uh, if you do need help, hit me up on Twitch. I'm live Monday through Friday, like 8, 8 to 3 Central Standard Time. So I'm always happy to help. I do the cave troll a lot. I did it like 400 times in one week. So if you need help, hit me up. I don't, I don't mind helping at all. This works for every single class. I've done it level 1 naked with every single class with starting gear. Uh, Warlock is slightly different, but we have a video for Warlock specifically. It has to deal with uh, abusing the range of the uh, cave troll whenever he roars. But all the information should be here. Subscribe, like, all that jazz, and uh, I'll see you on Twitch. Yes. So for the fight, starting out, if you're gonna do normals, you'll probably get poisoned weapon just because the troll has no magic resist. So it's unmitigated damage. And you'll probably be using a gray starter dagger to practice on. You can kill it with a starter dagger, but it's, it's not great. You want to at least get uh, a vendor weapon. You can buy a rondel for like 10 gold from the weaponsmith. Or better yet, probably go to trade if you're level 10 and get a stiletto. You don't really need damage perks to kill the troll if you're bringing a weapon. So I would take whatever you need to get out of the dungeon. So we're using poison weapon and double jump. If you're using hide, I would use stealth so you can, you know, take a few steps and maybe ambush so you get the, the extra damage whenever you come out of stealth. Personally, I take weak point. I used to take weak, weak point and rupture, but with so many people doing the troll now, I've been taking hide because in the middle of the fight, if someone comes in and they're trying to grief you, you can hide and the troll will drop aggro on you and chase them. In high roller, I take jokester over poison weapon. Just because the better your gear, the less that one, two, three, four, five damage tick is going to matter. So on to the fight. He only has four attacks. He either swings with his right hand, and that's what happens when you circle left. And he can swing with his left hand, where he does like a punch, and that happens if you're circling to the right. He has the hammer smash, where... Either, either way, he can do this. He just picks his hammer up real fast and hits forward. And then he has the uh, double-handed double, double -handed overhead hammer smash. Those are the only four attacks that you'll probably see if you're doing the strategy right. So whenever we start the fight, we're going to start from directly behind him. And it just seems like that's the, the area in the room where you can get the closest to his body without him aggroing. Anytime you're not in melee range, he can roar at you. And starting the fight, you can't start in melee range. So there is a chance that he starts the fight with a roar. And if you start from directly behind him, you have plenty of time to run to his side to avoid the roar. After you start the fight, you're just going to circle left. You just go clockwise around him. And you take turns. He attacks, and then you attack. And you go out, and he attacks again, and then you attack. You, uh, you only get two hits, like if he swings with his normal attack, like the sideways swipe with the hammer, you can go up and you can poke his arm twice, and then you go back. And then whenever he does the overhead smash, you want to go up there and poke him in the head twice, and then go out. You know, that's, that's the whole fight. After he does the hammer smash, you can start counting, or the beginning of the fight, you can start counting. It'll either be three or four attacks and then he'll do another hammer smash overhead. For this, you just run away, and you run back in after he hits the ground. So I'll just count, one, and he'll smash two, and I'll punch him, three, and he'll swipe again, four. And you know that the hammer smash is coming. So you can go ahead and create distance. It'll never be more than four. Sometimes he does it on three, but it's usually four attacks. So just keep that in mind when you're doing the fight. 
if you're too far away, whenever you're running back in, he could roar at you. But the roar is a conal, it's a conal effect. So if he roars at you while you're running back in, just run to his side and you'll, you'll be right next to him and he won't hit you. Uh, usually whenever he roars at me, I hit him three times in the arm. If he does his normal attack, where he picks the hammer up with his right hand and swipes, you have to wait until his hand is coming back down to his side. If you go in too early after he does that normal attack, then he can combo attack. And he just rolls a random attack with the combo. So he could do a swing, and then he could immediately punch with his other hand. Or he could do the swing, and if you're too close, he could just immediately slam the hammer on the ground. And after that happens, if you're still too close, then he can do a heavy attack. And it just makes the fight really chaotic. There's, there's no reason to have that happen. All you have to do is slowly circle left, make sure you maintain the proper distance, wait until he puts his hand down, and go and hit him, and he'll never do combo attacks. Anytime he does a combo attack, it happens to me sometimes still, but every time he does a combo attack, I think, okay, I just messed up. So one of the big issues that players have is his roar. Uh, it'll only ever trigger if you're outside the melee range. If you get hit by a roar, he, he will do one of two things. If you are within range of being hit by his swipe, by his heavy attack, then he will do the heavy attack. If you're on the edge of that range, or even pretty close to him, you can run out of that range after he starts the attack. Once it's initiated, once he's decided, okay, I want to swing instead of running at you, you can run out of that zone and you won't get hit. You don't have to jump, you don't have to crouch, you just have to move out of the zone. If you're too far away, then he's going to run at you and he's going to swing. And there are slight, very, very slight differences between his posture whenever he swings high or low. Generally, he will swing low so you can jump over it, but it's, it's not something you want to have happen. If you're trying to dodge the high low attack by looking for a visual cue, this is what I've seen. You look behind his back and he'll swing back farther. You can see the hammer behind his back just slightly. And that's when he's doing a high attack and you need, you need to crouch. This is really, really hard to dodge. I do not advise like making this part of your strategy unless you're a god gamer, and I am not. Another issue during the fight is this little door over here. If he gets too close to that corner and you walk into that, then he's going to de-aggro. He's going to go to the center of the room and instantly heal to full. So if, you, if you're getting stuck, so you've been doing the fight for like a minute, two minutes, and he's moving closer and closer to a wall. And it's hard to circle whenever he's on a wall. So just take a break from the DPS. Just, you know, stand in his melee range with your back towards the center of the room and let him swing at you without you attacking. You stay on the edge, he swings, and you go back. He swings, you go back. Usually it only takes three attacks and he's in a pretty favorable position for you to continue the fight. I've uh, also noticed recently that sometimes he doesn't roar at all. He'll just charge straight at you and do the uh, heavy attack. No clue what triggers this. I'll see it maybe once a day, like if I'm watching someone else do the fight. Yeah, you, you really want to stay in melee range. I don't know what causes that. I don't know. I can't figure it out. So, that's normal troll. And high roller... It's actually easier. He has a new attack in High Roller. He has a hammer fist that he mixes into the rotation. He will, with this hand, he'll smash the ground. And after that, he has like a small delay before he attacks again. With the stiletto or rondel, you can get three headshots when he does this attack. It's like, this the fight's so fast. When he roars, if it hits you, it will give you a drunk effect. That's the only two differences I've noticed in the fight. Uh, the drunk effect is pretty disorienting. Uh, go drink a beer in the game and see if uh, you can fight the boss like that. And the effect only lasts as long as it's slow, so it's not too bad, but that's the only two changes. 
mechanically the fight is exactly the same. It's it's no different whatsoever. It's not what I expected of High Roller Troll. Thought maybe it'd move faster or have, you know, a better move. But the, it just makes the fight easier. Hands down, easier fight than normal. All right, guys, that's all I've got. If you're still having trouble with the cave troll, hit me up on Twitch. I stream Monday through Friday, sometimes on the weekends if my wife allows. Uh, daily, daily, I help people kill the troll. I don't mind doing it at all. Uh, it feels pretty good that the cave troll is so accessible because uh, videos like this. Uh, if you need advice for any class, I've done it level one naked on every class. Just hit me up and follow, like, subscribe, all that jazz. See you in the Goblin Caves.